But up, up, but up, up. And it looks like we're going into the dreaded Savior Aiden, Kisei, and Ahmed Cleave. The one Cleave that actually has given me the most anxiety of all of the ones that I've really kind of dealt with in the past. But with the basic, well, basically just with the advent of Navy Captain Landy, Salty, NACL, Clandy, whatever the hell you guys want to call her, that blue haired bitch. Yeah, we'll go with that. Yeah, with that blue haired bitch. She basically just completely fucking stops this cleave in 110% of like any particular way you could imagine. So we're going into this with Yulha, Destina, and uh, Navy Captain Landy. Or Blue Haired Bitch. And whenever you go in with this team, Na just Blue Haired Bitch is so fucking stupid. The fact that she just straight up gives the entire team crit resist, not, just just for free, yeah, just at the start. Hey, 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 guys, you see this? Here, you can have this shit. I don't need it. I just straight up have 70, and I don't even need crit resist buff. I'm the shit. So because of that, you're going to have Savior, uh, Savior Aiden, then you're going to also have Kisei, who are the only two real damage dealers on this team. Now, the only one that's an actual wild card is going to be Savior Aiden. Now, the reason why Savior Aiden's a wild card is just, you just don't know who she's going to hit. She's either going to go into like one of your other green units first, because depending on the speed tuning as well, it could be Kisei going first, or it could be Savior Aiden going first. Knowing my luck, it is almost always Savior Aiden going first, going uh, first, and because of that, you just don't know who she's going to hit. So instead, she went into my Destina first, so now I'm at pretty much like a game of, I'm just playing a game of trying to keep my Destina alive, because any and all like random hits, like the Kisei will always go into your blue, blue haired bitch, and like all of your Savior Aiden hits are going to go into your Destina, but thankfully you have Yulha there with you as well, who's just strictly there to take up extra hits of damage with Aureus, and Shazam, throughout the whole fight, you'll just, you'll whittle it down and you'll go through it. Now, on to the next one. This is probably just some basic shit. Oh, yeah. This is, uh, this is a match that actually, like, pissed me the fuck off. Also, straight up, that, um, Conqueror Lilius just so happens to have well over 100 effectiveness. Probably somewhere in the 150s or so. Maybe even higher. Because whenever you look at it, like, oh, yeah, Shadow Knight Pillow, she have 150 effect resist, right? Well, opening turn, I have 150 plus 60. Because that's the way in which her mechanics work. Now, thankfully for us, we happen to get our turn in. And I'm pretty positive this was when I was using Arunka using, um... I think I'm actually trying out the uh, Little Queen's artifact. Like, the, yeah, yeah, Little Queen's huge, huge crown. I honestly really kind of hate that artifact because I kind of feel like I can get more value out of Ubris's tooth. But, like, at the same time, I think my biggest problem with using Arunka into these oh-so-wonderful barrier-based teams is I'm just straight up, I don't have the attack stat to, like, really deal everything that I need to. And, yo, hey, Shu, can you, like, maybe calm the fuck down for, like, a second? You have gone in and done the extra attack for every single fucking hit. How about you just, like, chill the fuck out for just a sec? Just a fucking second. I know your ML's coming out and people are going to probably start imprinting you like crazy and you're trying to give yourself value so that you don't get, like, taken out of the game. But trust me, I think you'll be aight. You're already dumb enough as it is. But anyway, like I was saying before, with Arunka, if I had Ubers' Tooth, I'm actually pretty positive I would have already killed this uh, shoe by now just because the additional damage that you deal on, like, individual Ubers procs is just insane. For example, right here, she'd be fucking dead just because of all the extra damage that you're going to be dealing. Now, because of that, well, look who's still alive. I'm already upset. Go fuck yourself, shoe. So... Basically, what you saw there was, Teehee XD, I'm gonna do additional attack every single fucking chance that I get. LOL, Teehee, aren't I cute? No, you're not. Get the fuck out of my face. But either way, I'm still kind of unsold on if I want to continue to use Arunka in this way. I kind of feel like I'm going to have to bite the bullet. And if any time I want to use Arunka, I have to have attack buff and I have to have, like, vigor. Period. Otherwise, I just straight up can't use her. Oh, goody. So this is actually a somewhat fairly interesting team, but there's like a huge weakness in and of itself. For starters, he's using Christy, um, blue haired bitch and the other blue haired bitch, except this is Arya. That's uh, that's Teddy Milf. 
So the big thing here in particular is, oh, so Christy's going to give a lot of her effect res over to Arya. Arya is going to be like untouchable. You're not going to strip her. You're not going to deal with any of that shit. But like, here's the thing. You have two targets on this team. This is, like, I can't see an even... I can't see a better place to just throw Rowana on it. The reason why is I'm going to be dealing with counterattacks. I'm going to be dealing with additional attacks. I'm going to be dealing with the mechanics of Arya herself whenever you hit her. Oh, hey, lol, here's just another additional attack that hits the entire team. My team's going to be healthy as fuck. Like, I have absolutely nothing to worry about. And then the very first chance that I get, I'm just going to rip the S3 into the uh, blue-haired bitch, and she's dead. Like, 100%. This is why, like, Dark Corvus is so crazy going into into blue-haired bitches kind of, like, teams. It's, she's not a threat if you have Dark Corvus. Now, I do feel kind of bad for anyone who doesn't happen to have Dark Corvus in this sense. But, like, the other cool thing here is I also brought Milim with me. I honestly didn't care if she got killed or not. Milim is only there for one reason, and that is when Arya actually activates her S3, which gives stealth to the entire team, on Milim's turn, whenever anything is in stealth, they immediately go out of stealth. One of the things that I kind of hate about that is the fact that she's the only character in the game that can fucking do that. Everything else has to AoE or you have to, like, reduce buff by one or whatever, which means, oh, hey, lol, that's another thing that Conqueror Lilius can do. Boy, what a fucking cool character. What a cool-ass character. I wonder if she'll ever get nerfed. The, um, the census is more than likely probably fucking not. Nah, fuck it. Let's just go ahead and over-nerf Hui Young. We won't even touch Conquer Lilius. That shit's totally fine. Yeah, I'm just being salty. The uh, the nerf for Wang Young absolutely needed to happen. But like the main reason why I'm not really even commenting on anything else is because there's nothing else that needs to be done. Like the very next chance that Dark Corvus even gets, I'll just go ahead and go into the Aria with the S3 because the oh so wonderful thing about uh, Devil's Descent is it straight up pierces. It just does flat fucking damage. Now pay attention to this number. That is 27k. That is going to uh, come into play probably about 20 or 30 minutes from now. But either way, we'll remember that for later. So onto this next team here, there is Unbound Knight Arrowell, Charlotte, and Lone Crescent Bologna, and I'm weighing my options on what I want to do. I was initially thinking, well, maybe I should actually go into the Lone Crescent Bologna with the S2 for the sake of possibly getting a stun. I had no fucking clue that this bitch was going to be on counter. So because she countered me right there, and she fucking, anytime that Lone Crescent Bologna does her S1, she gives herself immunity. Now that she has immunity, I have no opportunity to actually try and stun. I can attempt to do a stun on Sez with his S2 to see if maybe it'll hit Charlotte, but now that the one unit that I did want to stun is free to go in, oh, bye, Spez. I almost never use you. Okay, cool. Thanks. Bye. But now that we've already used Stray's S, uh, S3, because he also happens to have Benny Maro's Tai Chi, the, one of the most busted fucking, like, uh, warrior artifacts in the entire game, which gives you a free attack buff on your turn if you don't have any debuffs that are on you. I was able to completely knock out the Unbound Knight Arrowell. I used the S2 on um, Cerise's turn to give a uh, stun over to Lone Crescent Bologna because she had to use her S3. That means she has no more immunity. And then we just kind of whittled the rest of the team down because Stray's is based as fuck. Now, oh goody, yet another match. Do you guys want to take an even close guess as to what will possibly happen because Shu is on team? Well, I'll give you a hint. Teehee XD! So, so basically, this right here is already an immediate mistake. I keep trying to tell myself this in post. Like, got, loosen, stop fucking using Sharoon S3 on opening turn if they have like if they have no buffs or whatever because like right now this is a prime opportunity to use Sharoon's S3 because they all have like crit resist and Shu also has immunity up because the sooner we can injure the Shu the better because then her damage is just gonna fall into the shitter and she ain't gonna be able to do fucking jack shit and also, this Bellion is, one, not on injury, I was very surprised by that, and also, not on Elbrus. You almost never see that. 
She's on uh, the Mature Sunglasses, which is the limited artifact for uh, Summer Break Charlotte. So basically what that means is any damage that the Bellion is going to do is going to be slightly higher than normal, and she's going to take like lesser damage from crits, I believe. Well, lucky for us, we're not going to be doing crits. However, we're taking an absurd amount of fucking damage, and LOL, we just got Teehee XD. So that fucking sucks. So what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to bring the, uh, bring Death Dealer Ray back. What sucks dick, because he's up there at the very top of the CR bar, so he's still got to go through a few more turns to get through. So hopefully, I'll be able to slow the team down enough with speed down that Sharoon's going to do here. And, oh, goody, goody, goody. So the shoe did an additional, did one attack that was a counter attack, then did another additional attack, and then hit my DD, DDR yet again. Yay! Are you guys ready to just sit through like three fucking minutes of nothing fucking happening? I love it when a plan doesn't work because you just so happen to be retarded. Population me! So basically what you're seeing on screen now is just straight up, I, I can't do anything. Like, I'm just surviving until I can get to a good opportunity to use S3 on Destina to bring Death Dealer Ray back, and then I can just go in. Because he's got his S3 ready. As soon as Death Dealer Ray do goes in with Cloud of Death, I fucking win. Now, the one thing in particular upon watching this now is because I know that this Bellion is not on injury now... It would have been a lot better if I happened to bring Rowana with me. But I mean, hey, who the fuck knows, like, what Abelian is going to be on? I was definitely not expecting fucking mature sunglasses and on counter set. Not in the slightest. So, because of that, that's why I decided to go a little bit safe with this one. Bring a Destina just in case I need any kind of healing or anything like that. And the shoe just went absolutely rip-roaring fucking crazy on my Death Dealer Ray. And he be dead mad fucking quick. So then we also happen to get, just unlucky enough, get lots and lots of wonderful, delicious crits on our Sharoon as well, who also needs to be rebuilt because she's honestly way too fucking squishy. Kind of sucks, but hey, what can you do? Gear is kind of a bitch. And the Teehee XD has now no longer worked. Teehee XD.exe is no longer working. And now, because of that, we're able to just go in, cloud of death, get the fuck out of my fucking game. So now that she was dead, sure, we're all we're still looking like a little bit eh right now, but thankfully for us, the effectiveness that's on that Bellion is like piss weak. So she's able to fall asleep from my Death Dealer Ray. Like my DDR is actually rocking bloat ER instead of bloat effectiveness. The reason why I do that is just because he gives himself effectiveness buff. Now, I should honestly have more of a balance, like like maybe 100-100, but like, I'll get to that shit later, man. Gearing's hard. Oh, goody! Are you guys ready to see a remnant of the past and uh, Hua Young coming in and doing big girl damage? So, the one thing in particular is there is literally one threat on this team, that being Apocalypse Ravi. So, with that said, we'll use our Inos 2.0, give ourselves attack buff and speed buff, and the fact that every turn that Inos 2.0 ends with, she, uh, she CR boosts whoever has the highest attack on the field. Well, no, out of this entire team right here, who's going to have higher attack than uh, 6.2k? Well, that would be Hua Young. <laughs> she ain't going nowhere in terms of, like, who's going to get the next turn. So, yeah, sure, uh, Apocalypse Ravi did get, like, a little bit of a boost, but we had a bigger boost on Hua Young. Now, because of that, we go into the Apocalypse Ravi. I don't give a flying fuck if you had Proof of Valor. I have a lot of attack. I have attack buff. And I also happen to have a triple torrent set. Something that I have been working on, quite literally, for, like... When was the last fucking event crafting event? That was, like, over eight fucking months ago or some shit. Yeah, she's rocking two pieces of, like, event-crafted gear. <laughs> Just because getting a torrent set is such an enormous fucking pain in the ass. Now, to those of you who have the triple torrent set, yo, I feel for all of you who have had to farm that shit. It is awful. <laughs> like, Katie's in and of itself is a terrible fucking raid. Like, it, it's so bad, nobody does that raid legit. Like, unless you're a retard like me. But like if you're if you want to do like an Akadi's raid effectively, basically what you do is you like you just you just one tap it with like say a strays or something like that. I happen to have a second strays, but he's not built accordingly to one tap the raid. 
I'm kind of dumb like that. I'll get around to it eventually whenever I feel the need to actually in engage with the system and create myself gear. Now, you also happen to see that I have Christy on my team with me. She is only there for one reason and one reason alone. She just provides the extra effect resist that she has that's going to go onto my Ionos 2.0. Now, my Ionos 2.0 is actually kind of good. She has a fairly decent amount of effect in this. She has like 200 effect res and she's like 240 speed. In all honesty, she could be faster. It's very, very possible that she could be faster. But because we're at 200 effect res, and then we have Christy with us who provides an additional 100 effect res, well, I don't give a fuck what you do, Solitaria. Even if you were fast as fuck at the start, you ain't fucking touching 300 effect res. Mm-mm. Get the fuck out of my game. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the Guild War. Hoorah! And, like, every time I look at my Strays' stats, it, it always does kind of, like, disappoint me just a tad. Because when I see those stats, it's like, God, this is, like, the best thing I ever fucking built. But I feel like I can never use him. Now, the reason why is because a lot of what we fight is, like, conquer Lilius, and then there's, like, almost no HP bruisers or, like, tanks on the teams. Because, like, everybody does, like, r and L ran and some other fucking annoying shit. And then there's Navy Captain Landy being on the team. I can't even reliably do that anymore because then they're going to have crit resist. And it's just a whole fucking thing. It's a huge pain in the ass. And, and that's where, like, I feel like my strays, as impressive as he is... He's not fast enough, so I can't, like, throw him in to, like, other teams to, like, go first. Because I feel like you have to be, like, 260 or something, and I just straight up, I can't make that shit stretch. And then there's, um... <sighs> then there's the fact that, like, before Benny Mars Taichi, I just didn't have any other buffers who were faster than him. Because I'm a fucking idiot. <laughs> But, like, either way, that's, like, the predicament with my strays. And, you know, it's, like, also kind of low-key pisses me off a little bit. My Arunka has nowhere near as much, like, stat building as my Huayung. Like, she, like Arunka took almost no time for me to build it all. Meanwhile, Huayung has been, like, a fucking eight-month project. And my Arunka still has more attack than my Huayung. I'm fucking offended, man. <laughs> And, but either way, man, I mean, I guess that's just the way it runs. Yeah, we had to nerf Wei Young. Wei Young is just way too fucking stupid. I 100% agree. The only way you could have fought her back in the day was you had to fucking cleave that bitch. And even still, she had so much fucking tank ability and she took reduced damage from crits and all that fucking shit. So then she was also hard to kill. And it's just, oh God, she was a fucking nightmare. But I still feel, I still do firmly believe, even though she was nerfed, I actually do think she was over nerfed. Because whenever she got nerfed, they quite literally nerfed the entire fucking kit. They didn't just touch the S3, the big thing that did need to be touched. But then they also, like, they fucked up her attack that she had. They nerfed how much attack she gained. Then they also took away the CR boost on the S1. They, they just, they fucking neutered her. And I don't know, man. Hopefully she'll get an EE at some point and it'll, like, fix a lot of her stuff. But hey, guys, if you like this video, go ahead and leave a like. And uh, if you like more of my content, please hit subscribe. Oh, hey, what the hell is that? Ah, Uber's here! Update. Stop it! Well, fuck. <laughs> well, that's kind of a problem. Well, either way, why don't we go on ahead and just go into yet another oh-so-wonderful, awesome-tastic, orgasmalicious guild war. Now, that being said, we're fighting my oh-so-favorite fucking character, Lua, and because we're fighting Lua, I'm going to be doing some Christy, um, Shadow Knight Pillis, and a particular healer. I normally go in this with Rowana, but because we're not really fighting anything that's going to be doing additional attacks and then counterattacks, things of that mu things of that nature, there's actually no reason to bring Rowana into this. So instead, I decided, well, let's go in and bring Destina. So with Destina, we have pretty decent healing, a nice anchor at that, because we also have Guardian Ice Crystals. Guardian Ice Crystals being able to heal you out of turn if you ever happen to drop below 50% HP and then you also take a hit. And basically, we've gone one turn in. The uh, Savior Aiden is already at half HP. The very next S3 that we gain on our uh, Shadow Knight Pillis, that bitch is fucking dead. Just 100%. 
And then also, even though we're fighting Ikarina, and Ikarina being probably one of the most annoying bitches in the game right now, just because, like, lol, I just exist, I make you fucking mauled, which she does, not gonna lie. With the team that we're going in with, we're extremely safe. Now, we have Christy with us. She provides 100% of, she provides 50% of her ER, which in this case is going to be like 200, so then about 100 ER. Going to go on to Shadow Knight Pillis. We have 150. Anytime we're above 70% HP, we gain an additional 60. That's in the 200s, 210s, somewhere in that ish area. And then you add up 100% to that. Opening turn, that Lua ain't doing shit. So now because we have all that and we were able to get to our next s3 very like moderately quickly now the uh savior aiden is dead so all that's left now is i karina and lua lua being the annoying bitch that she is who is just completely just crippled she can't do anything now like really she can't she can't do anything She's got a uh, guiding light on her, so I can't attack her. Which, if you ever have that opportunity and you see a Lua that does not have guiding light, just fucking kill the Lua. As soon as you kill the Lua, it's going to like end so much annoying shit that you have to deal with. For numerous reasons. One, a like, a Lua's fast as fuck, so she's going to take a lot of the turns up. And just like, hey, here's two turns right here, wasting my fucking time. That's like eight... 10 seconds of just shit that I can't do. And because all we were able to do was just go into the Icarina, I'm just going to edit this down for you guys. A whole bunch of those were like S1s and S3s going into her, just doing little bits of damage. Thankfully, we had Rocket Punch. Rocket Punch also being a fucking incredible artifact that is also a limited artifact. Kind of sucks dick that we really don't have any other means of getting it. And we also did a little bit of editing there to just trim down on the Lua, because when Lua's by herself, she can do literally nothing. Now, this is a team that I have not used in a hot fucking minute. This is Mediator Cowric, uh, Magic Scholar Doris, and Hui Young. Now, what's so interesting about this team? Back in the day, it was mad OP, because one, Hui Young could one-tap quite literally 90 to 95% of the entire population of Epic Seven. Like, she just could. She was she was that broken. And because you are usually fighting an Apocalypse Ravi, you would then have Magic Scholar Doris there with you, who would not only provide defense buff, but also HP buff, which is just regen. So anytime your turn rolls around, you just gain even more health. And because you also have death buff, you're just straight up not taking any fucking damage. And then you have Mediator Cowric, who was, is, and pretty much will almost always be the best fucking cleanser in the entire fucking universe. The only thing that even really remotely fucks him over is, um, is turn cooldown. That's like the only thing that can really even stop him. Period. <laughs> that's, that's the only means that you can fight him, and you don't really fight that on defense all too often. So, that's why that team before was just mad fucking crazy. Now, it's a little bit harder to do because of the massive nerfs that Hui Young got. Now, if you play with Wei Young in a way, and like, for instance, I have her on a triple torrent set, it was a huge fucking pain in the ass to make, mainly because the speed was usually a factor. You really, really kind of wanted her to be on a speed set, and I just felt like with one torrent set, she just straight up wasn't able to deal enough damage. But now... The gap is kind of closing a little bit, so anytime I see any particular HP cancer that like really kind of annoys the shit out of me, I feel very confident in my abilities to one-tap it. The only things that are kind of sketchy is if there is a unit that's going to have a barrier and Proof of Valor, stuff like that, I feel like I probably can't one-tap that. Here, because we're only dealing with Proof of Valor, we were able to just one-tap the A-Ravi as well. And it was super, super cool. Now, we're going to be fighting another one of these teams with the exact same team, and I'll discuss even more stuff about it. So here is Conqueror Lilius, Apocalypse Ravi, and a Senya, I believe. So the Conqueror Lilius is going to be providing her S2 on whoever has the highest barrier. Now, this is a thing, a little thing that also kind of fucks you up. Because you're rocking this team your Mediator Cowork is going to be targeted by the Conqueror Lilius. So then that'll kind of fuck up your turn order just a little bit. But the good news about it is it doesn't really affect you too terribly much. Like, you can just kind of, like, delay one turn if you wish because it feels really, really scary to just, like, let an Hoi Young S3 rip because of the nerfs that she received. They also, like, pushed her cooldown up on her S3 by another turn. Like, not only did they make her S3 harder to use in the sense that you need to know the enemy HP, otherwise it's going to do fucking piss ant garbage tier damage, or you're going to be 
just waiting for your turn, and it'll take too long until you can actually be useful again. Now, this is an example right here of two different things. One, she had a really, really thick-ass barrier on her, that being from Conqueror Lilius, which, by the by, guys, the game doesn't fucking tell you that the barrier that she provides oh yeah it's it's influenced by how much hp they have but yeah, if you check the fucking game files that shit is 25 percent of the it is it is 25 percent of whoever the barrier is going on like 25 percent of their hp becomes the barrier so if you're rocking like 22 23k somewhere along those lines you're probably looking at like a 6k or like maybe like it's somewhere in that range of a barrier I never even fucking thought of that. I just kind of figured, oh, like, that's, that's like, it's going to be like a baby barrier. It's going to be like, you know, three, two, three K or whatever. But no, depending on like how thick the unit is, which in this case, Apocalypse Ravi, why the fuck wouldn't they be thick? It's going to be a really, really big, thick ass, annoying fucking barrier. Now, the good thing is we've done a big hit to her. The next chance that we really get, we'll be able to kill her. But here's where like, I make another kind of like mistake throughout the fight, which was, I had a lot of opportunities to just straight up kill the Conqueror Lilius. I should have taken it because anytime you're dealing with this stupid fucking bitch, she really just kind of makes you mauled because of one, she's fast as fuck. Two, she has Vigor. Vigor is basically baby attack buff and defense buff combined. <laughs> so, and she's the only fucking character that gives it. Then she also reduces buff durations by one turn whenever she uses her S3. She gives herself an additional turn with that, which means that she can either S1 drag another unit into you, or she can use her S2, which will give a really thick-ass barrier to whoever has the most HP. And then it will also do a redirect provoke on whoever she's hitting. Yo, guys, you think maybe her kits may be a little bit too fucking stacked? Like, you think maybe just a tad? Just a little, just a little bit. Just, just a little bit. Just a little tiny fucking bit. But either way, we were able to deal with the Conqueror Lilius. We were able to deal with the Apocalypse Ravi. Apocalypse Ravi being under, undoubtedly based going into your Doris because Doris is just going to tank that hit like a champ. She's going to have barriers from your Mediator Cowric. She's going to give herself defense buff. She's going to have HP regen anytime a dark unit hits her. And I also happen to have mine on Prothetic Candlestick because eh, that's like the one bad thing about Magic Scholar Doris. Her cooldowns are a little fucking shit. <laughs> and it's because of that is the main reason why I have Prophetic Candlestick on her. And I always use her to go into dark baits of any kind. She's my light bait unit going into like any particular dark cancer of any kind. And if I have Prophetic, I usually always have some heals up. Oh, goody. So you're about to see like another portion of Malding, but like for all of like weird ass reasons. So one... We're going into an, uh, into an Alencia. An Alencia on Prayer of Solitude, mind you. So that's 24k HP on this bitch. And she's also on injury. The way you can tell is the opening hit that Alencia does, that does not deal injury. It never does. So if you ever see an opening hit from Alencia and you immediately know from the injury that you take, yep, that's injury. Because the reason why you kind of need to know that is Alencia herself does have injury on her kit. The only reason why you ever see that is when it's on Stomp. Stomp is her S2 follow-up from her S1 attack. Now, there is a way that you can prevent yourself from ever seeing Stomp, and that's if you're rocking an unbuffable character. So if you have any means of spreading unbuffable onto the team, like, oh, I don't know, Basar, for example. But hey, who the fuck has Basar built anymore? Everybody just, you know, dumped all their Basars into DJB. Man. I need to get back on using Basar, because he kind of, like, fights a lot of this dumb shit because of how strong Unbuffable is, and the fact that if you're using Basar, if you soul burn it, that's irresistible, motherfucker! What are you gonna do? Now, one other thing that's, like, kind of pissing me off a little bit, you guys might have already seen it a few times. Um, my Ed has zero effect resist, and he has been hit, like, twice now, and they have 15 percented into him. Which is why I will continue to say over and over and over again. Hey, Smilegate, could you maybe perhaps, if a character is rocking zero effect resist, maybe 15% should not exist for that character. Now, if you have even one effect resist, then you can apply the 15% nature of fantastic bullshit. 
But if a character is rocking zero effect res, I kind of feel like if the attack debuff goes in, it should fucking go in. Maybe that's just me. Maybe I'm retarded. Then again, you know what? We're not even going to say maybe. I know I'm retarded. But that's just one pipe dream thing that I, in particular, that I would, I would particularly like. It would be pretty fucking based, I would say so myself, if they would actually do that. They're probably never going to do that because that sounds like a lot of annoying ass work. Coding is hard, boys and girls. But either way... That's like the one thing that annoys the ever-loving shit out of me anytime I use Ed. Even even going into shit like uh, like Ran. Oh, hey, cool. I resisted everything, and now he didn't actually go into the Ran. That's two debuffs, two, be two debuff chances going into him. And I've resisted both before. It's fucking great. I love that shit. But either way, we were able to just plow through this because we happened to get pretty lucky. We, uh, we don't miss a whole bunch on the Ocarina, so there's really no need to actually edit this down. Sure. We miss here. She counterattacks. Does land a, dense, a defense break. I do equivalent exchange. Still miss. And, well, guess whose turn it is to actually get a kill? Your support tank that does absolutely no fucking damage. LOL. <sighs> so are you guys ready for the one match right here in particular that made me mauled more than anything? And it's not because of what happens. It's because of what I did to myself. So, when you look at this team, you immediately see a 100%... Oh, wow, yeah, that'll fucking work. Easy, 100%. Conqueror Lilius is going to go, provoke the Dark Corvus, and then you're going to get your Asarius turn. You use your S2 right here. This will fully cool down your Dark Corvus. Now you're ready to Devil's Descent. And because you also happen to have uh, Flan's Artifact, Shazam, you also have 10 souls. So... Now we're ready to go in. I decide to just S3 into the Icarina because I know she's going to react because we're going to just straight up kill this Silencia real quick. We'll go ahead and boost up the Dark Corvus because he got pushed back and we'll cleanse him here. Soul Burn S3, go into the uh, Alencia and we don't kill. Now, there are reasons why we did not kill. The biggest reason of all is, you remember that number that I was talking about, like about 20 or so minutes ago? It was probably more, who knows. We do 27,000 to any unit that is not a light unit. The reason why we do 29k to light units is because we are doing element advantage damage. That's additional damage that's going to go on to an element advantage unit. So if you're ever used to going into light units with Dark Corvus, always remember you're doing more damage. So one way you could easily make this work is there's two different methods. I have Proof of Valor on my Dark Corvus so that he can take more abuse and I almost never remove it. If I had a Portrait of Saviors, we would have been fine. We would have done enough extra damage that we would have killed this bitch. And then two is... Instead of going into the Icarina, we could have just straight up gone into the Alencia because she's the one who had the barrier. So if we just did that into Alencia and we didn't get 15%ed and we were able to strip her and then apply like, you know, actually it doesn't even matter. We don't need to apply buffs. We just needed to strip. So if the Asaria was able to strip Alencia, then we'd be able to kill her there because we're not dealing with barriers. And then we just slowly grind the team down because all the uh, Icarina is going to do is go into your Dark Corvus and then you would eventually win. So yeah. Really, really kind of upset with myself on that. So here on this next fight right here, I was actually doing this for the sake of testing. I mean, we're still in preseason. Why not do some testing? I have recently put some actual attack gear on my Briar Witch Asaria, and I wanted to see, yo, is this enough to actually just straight up kill a uh, Savior Aiden? It just barely does. So if I had attack buff, yes, that's 100% all the time every single time because i have uh misha's missile misha's guiding missile or whatever it's going to be um kana's honor fact that's on my briar witch so i'm always going to hit a savior aiden 100 because it's also a maxed missile and you know small gate being the annoying motherfuckers that they are anything that like has hit chance percentage or whatever it'll only work if you have plus 30 that motherfucker so hey let's go whale land Ooh woo now with that being said, we're also going into a Zeo and we're going into a Senya. So the other big thing as well that's kind of like fucking me over here is I didn't think this far ahead. Sure, the Senya is going to go into Ahmed instead of going into, say, Yulha. So there is a chance that I could have been in a very, very bad mix of like debuffs right here. But fortunately for me, if I did have like... um. 
if I if I did have counter like provoke on me right there that's why i saved the ahmed s3 because yeah a lot of times we always think of the ahmed s3 of like oh yeah you're just going in you're doing big damage you're gonna do like 50 percent on the cr bar because you happen to land the s3 because if you look at the end of the cr bar yule is going to be like halfway down that's the big thing that we always think about when it comes to ahmed's s3 but the other big thing that it does is it also fucking cleanses debuffs so that's like one big small thing that you can always remember about it and we've taken long enough the zeo wasn't enough of a threat in terms of doing damage to really be scary and he doesn't have DFI anymore so now that he doesn't have DFI just kill it get the fuck out of my game fucker <laughs> and with that being said that is the Guild War I hope you guys enjoyed the video but yeah if you did I would greatly appreciate it if you guys would leave any particular likes on anything that you like and also uh, like real talk for a sec if there's anything in particular that i do that you like or anything in particular that you think i can improve on something you want me to talk about anything like that like please go ahead and leave a comment like i i read every comment i may not respond to them all immediately but like there is actually kind of a reason for that um i'm busy as fuck i'm usually <laughs> dead fucking tired like by the time i even get a chance to read those comments but yeah, I, I do actually read everybody's comment. I, I really do. So if you ever like have questions or you want to like know anything or you want me to talk about anything in particular, please just go ahead and let me know. Like uh, there's there's always there's always something going on, and I've always just got something to say because like hey yo narcissism yeah I'm the I'm fucking awesome like that. But like if um anything in particular like. Any questions, I'll just take them. It's just it's something to talk about during these particular moments. Whenever I don't have anything to talk about, and I'm just clearly shamelessly stretching the uh, end of the video because I don't actually have anything to talk about. Now that also being said, uh, there is actually currently a uh, tournament that was uh, going on this weekend. It's uh, going to be on Valky's channel, and I've actually been uh, guest commentating on it for a hot little bit. It it's on um, Valky's channel, but also Divine uh, Divine Shadow, the other winner of the OCC competition that i was a part of way back in vegas uh, he's also going to be there for that he's he's the uh, co-commentator with valky they actually they do everything together and they were just looking for a guest uh, for any particular guest and they happen to invite me so hey you got the time feel free to go ahead and check us out we have we try to have tons of fun on these draft mode picks hope you guys have a good one see you later bye